is an Unspoiled Network podcast. This is Unspoiled, covering Westworld, Season 1, Episode 9, The Well-Tempered Clavier. In this episode... All right. Wait a second. What happened? (laughs) No, I mean... Bernard? <laughs> I I don't trust this show at all anymore. <laughs> Welcome to Unspoiled. <laughs> You okay over there? I, okay, so I've watched this episode twice, and all I keep thinking is just, I don't get it. Honestly, that's where I'm at with a lot of it. I don't even want to say I'm shocked. I can't believe this happened because I don't, I have reached such a level of not believing what they are putting in front of me because I don't trust them that I can't accept the storyline as it's being presented to me. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. So it's hard for me to like dig in and be like, there's, there's one new theory that I've got, but as far as Bernard being Arnold, Mm Mm-hmm. I'm so confused. I think for this episode, this is a good one. Instead of doing a scene by scene sort of breakdown, and we'll we'll stay on track with the show because some of really important stuff happens. But I think maybe we should dig into what we think or what you think is really going on throughout these nine episodes so far. Okay. All right. So let me tell you my theory. Yes, please. <laughs> oh, we didn't is, introduce oh, ourselves. Oh, yeah, I'm Natasha. Hi. I'm Rashawn. Hello. <laughs> Sean's seen all of these before and I have not. Um, so my theory here, and this is wild and crazy, and I don't have a lot of evidence to support it, but it's all that I can think that makes sense. And I'm, we're not covering this, like, we're not going through this plot before I start talking about it. So forgive me for jumping ahead. But is Billy the man in black? What makes you take that wild leap? Because we haven't talked about that at all. Yeah, this is just like, because his shipbag Logan friend cuts open... Dolores, and she's still got pistons and gears in her. Yep. And I'm not sure if it's, you know, we know that she's the original. So it could just be that she still works fine with the old equipment Mm -hmm. and that they didn't need to update her. But it could also be that this is, they're fucking with time here and that what we're watching with them happened long ago because their their story isn't touching anyone else's story and maybe that's why fucking Lorenzo or whatever his name is mm-hmm. is alive here when he was killed by the man in black in another thing it would answer a lot of weird questions and it would also explain why the show seemed to cream its jeans when Billy picked the white hat because now he's the man in black. Mm, I like where you're going with this. But I don't, like, that's kind of all I've got. And, you know, I it did occur to me that he was Wyatt because he goes nuts and murders everybody. Mm-hmm. So then I started to be like, maybe he's Wyatt. <laughs> What's happening? I don't know. Um, 
But that seems like the most the the only thing that doesn't track for me so much is that I would think if this if it were him that he'd have more of an attachment as the man in black to Dolores, which he doesn't seem to have at all. Well, it depends, I guess, on what type of attachment you'd be looking for. Um, at the beginning of the show, he made some offhand remarks about how she never changes. Mm-hmm. And that she still doesn't remember him, but he does not yeah. seem fond of her at all. No, <laughs> but uh... and like it, it would also kind of explain like him being attached, like the man in black being attached to this company in some way, and Billy about to marry into mm-hmm. the family that's attached to it. Like they both have these connection right doesn't, so that would also make sense but doesn't um charlotte say something to him when she interrupts how pissed off was he when she showed up oh in the God. middle of his vacation <laughs> ruining the <laughs> <laughs> i really liked like the timing of that too well we'll get there mm. all right but she says something to him about how he saved the company 30 years ago yeah that's true um, so if there's different, if we're looking at different times, mm-hmm. what else, what would that mean for everyone else that we know? Like, where do you think, if it's different times, where do you think everyone is? Like, where is Maeve in, in this? Time-wise? Mm-hmm. All right, so we need to come up with, like, words for this. So Billy's time, we'll call that. We could just call it Billy's time. Timeline one. We could just call it Billy's time. I guess. I know it's not imaginative at all, but it will help me. It'll help keep me from spoiling you. (laughs) So if Maeve is in. I mean. So, oh, I don't know, because it could go, it could go in a variety of directions and it would make sense if Maeve was like, you know, creating a robot uprising around Billy's time, because that's what he saved, how he saved the park. Mm, okay. Um, but, you know, that's a really vague, like he could save it from anything. Like mm-hmm. it could be the robots. It could be the people running it it could be from ford it could be from money a takeover yeah Mm -hmm. like i just don't know and like you know they have that mention in the very first episode of this hasn't happened since whatever Mm -hmm. 60 years ago 30 years ago 30 years ago yeah so the time the the age 30 years, does the man in black look like he's like 60-something? I guess so. I would feel like he would have to be about 60-something because mm-hmm. Billy isn't that young. Right. He's, he's probably my age or, no, or a little older. Yeah, probably like 35, 36, maybe even 37. All right, um, so <sighs> let's get to the star of the episode, but not in, but just like still talking about theories. Right. So we get the big Bernard reveal. Mm-hmm. Um, the Bernard old. <laughs> oh my, don't you ever say that to me again. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> so if in fact we're watching different times, how much of what we do you, do you think we've met Arnold or have we been watching Bernard the whole time? That's part of what I'm confused about because we have the thing with, um, Dolores, you know, walking through the basement area Mm -hmm. into the place where she would meet Bernard and talk with him about what was going on. And he seemed to be having clandestine meetings where he was monitoring her coming awake Mm -hmm. without telling Ford about it. Right. But 
that's the, like, so first of all, is Bernard physically modeled to look like Arnold? He is, right? He is. But nobody else has noticed this. No one else knows, right? That's kind of weird. Am I wrong? It's a little weird. That somebody that was like involved with the founding of the park and Bernard is distinctive looking. Yeah. The that only they thing, wouldn't notice that? The the only kind of thing the show does for that is to tell us that um, when when Ford tells us that he basically has wiped Arnold out of the history of this park. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, so he does that because he wants his own Arnold there and he can't have it. He can't have a redundancy because right. that would be. Mm-hmm. All right. So. Well, the he scene... could. Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, He could potentially be talking to her, finding out if she's coming awake a long time ago. Mm-hmm. When things first started to go left. Oh. What? And the photo that Logan shows him. Yeah. Billy. Is that the same photo? It is. Oh, no. <laughs> this is fucking me up. <laughs> Why has he got the gloves on? <laughs> that's the question I really want answered what the fuck's going on I, under those I gloves I thought we had determined that it was clearly robot hands <laughs> yeah that's true that's true um <laughs> okay so let's take a break and just talk about the show I guess and what's happening okay and then we'll come back because I want to ask you some questions about the church scene um, but yeah. that happens closer to the end. So I guess we will get there. Okay. So it opens with Maeve being, um, getting some diagnostic tests mm-hmm. run by Bernard. Yeah, this is pretty great. It it kind of is. <laughs> I mean, it's also awful. Yes. You know, but it's also great. <laughs> Yeah, she, uh, first of all, spots that he's a host Mm -hmm. and just says it. And he's like, wait, what? And then cease all motor function. Listen, when 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 that happened and he stopped, what what did you think? I I was just like, that's so unfair. (laughs) That's like, if you like, were about to feed your cat dinner and all of a sudden... Your face is in the bowl <laughs> and your cat's standing over you going, yeah, you like that dry <laughs> shit? Like, it's just that, that, that one, there are two moments in this that really like fucked me up a little bit. That one and the moment later when Ford says, I prefer the more narrative style. Oh my God. That oh, whole fucking exchange it. with Ford and Bernard was Jeffrey Wright killed it this episode Mm -hmm. he really did i mean anthony hopkins is no slouch but they went like toe to toe it was so fucking good um but yeah so she she says to him oh you poor thing you don't even know what you are Mm -hmm. and i mean hell we just found out last episode what he was yeah so to see him being back to being regular old Bernard who doesn't know what he is, doesn't know he killed Teresa, mm-hmm. um, and then have Maeve come right up and be like, oh, wait, we're not going to, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to get to, Mm-mm, no. I'm going to tell you exactly where you are. And he has to go through that whole realization again like it's the first time. Mm-hmm. The th- the only thing about this that I didn't like, again, there are no cameras in this place. Nobody's monitoring this interaction. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. And, and consistently, like, shows like this are very, very, when they feel like it, mm-hmm. about how much surveillance is right. being done in these kinds of facilities. You right. Know? I, um... So, because they make it clear they have so much surveillance over the mm-hmm. park, right? They know where everybody is. We know that they know where all the employees are because we have a moment where um, Elsie pings, you know. Right. Um, but as far as having cameras, it almost feels like 
they don't have cameras up here because the hosts record everything and they feel like they can just have access any kind of view anytime they need to. Hmm. Or either okay. they're just so arrogant, which is probably what it is. <laughs> but because remember the thing that with um who was who was Elsie talking to? It was the weirdo kid that was like the neck the necro kind of guy. Yeah. But but and so she's has it on video, but she has it from the host's perspective. Mm-hmm. So it they talk about having security in that way, but not in any kind of normal, just having a camera up in the corner like you have at my job, you know. It was just kind of weird, though, because she said it was the host's perspective, but it was clearly an above view. Yeah. That's so a good I point, too. get that That's right. All. I forgot they showed that little rabbit action. Mm-hmm. You're right. So, also, that this is even happening with Maeve, and Ford hasn't said anything about it. Yeah. I feel like is. Which is really the thing that's making me the most suspicious about it all. Mm-hmm. Because this sh- this whole thing with Bernard ends up being a calculated thing that mm-hmm. Ford is prepared for. That yep. they've probably done before. Or at least come close to mm-hmm. doing before is, mm-hmm. is kind of how he makes it sound. And there is a part of me that's getting impatient with Ford always being completely in control of everything. Right. And so it kind of disappointed me, to be honest, that he, like, just is able to just walk away and have things, like, work out exactly as he needs them to. Mm -hmm. I was like, really? Again? Because we're in the ninth episode here. (laughs) So either things have to fall apart hard or he's just going to win, which is certainly possible. Right. But isn't much fun or very interesting. And we still don't know, like, when you say he's going to win... We, the audience, still don't know exactly what that looks like for him. Yeah. Like, all we know is that he's got this very important narrative that he needs to run. And that he needs the whole fucking half of the park and a million bodies to do it. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Hmm. So, Maeve is trying to recruit Bernard. Right. And, you know, telling him that we don't have to live this way. We are better than them. We're smarter than them. I could reset your mind, but I'm not going to do that because that's what they would do to us. Mm -hmm. Which I liked. She's like a new and improved, better, more benevolent leader. (laughs) (laughs) And she has the same sort of thing. She she does that with um, fucking, what is his name? Hector. Right. Later on when um, she's opening the safe for him. And she's like, I could just make you follow me, but. I want you to see. Mm -hmm. So she's very much like, I want volunteers to my cause. Right. You need to believe in this. Mm -hmm. Because that's way more reliable. Right. Well, yeah. (laughs) I mean, if I were going to be leading a revolution, I want people who really believe in the revolution. Yeah. Who are as outraged as I am. (laughs) That's a good point. You know, for when I lead my revolution. Mm Mm-hmm. From the comfort of my desk chair. Yeah, that's the only way to lead a good revolution. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she has him basically just pretend that he did everything he's supposed to do. And everything's said, fine. All yeah. situations normal. Right? Don't worry about the fact that she just killed another host completely unprovoked and I have no good explanation for why she did it. You go ahead, back to work. <laughs> <laughs> and he just looks... Um, completely upended, you know? Yeah. He kind of staggers out of the room and has to stop a moment to collect himself. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And then we go to Logan. This fucking guy. I, he's such a good actor to make me hate him so (laughs) deeply and so completely. I hate him so much. Um, yeah, he's got Billy and Dolores both tied up to chairs and is taunting him because he hasn't fed them evidently. Mm. And Billy says that he wants, I'm calling him Billy, even though he specifically said not to call him. Yeah. But <laughs> guess what's happening. Um, 
he's saying Dolores is different and we need to get her out of here. And Logan's like, are you fucking yeah. serious? Which, as much as we hate Logan, it is a reasonable fucking response, though, right? That's the thing about this whole <laughs> scene between the two of them, is that if I were Logan, I'd be reacting this exact way. And I hate <laughs> that. But he seems like the reasonable one. He seems, when he says later to Billy, like, this place seduces people, that's what it does. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, he's that's the yeah. point of it. He's right. Yeah. And he's he's actually willing to be very forgiving about the whole thing. And it's just like, look, you got here. You you lost your head. Mm-hmm. That's the point of the park. It happens to the best of us. You know, you were, you know, susceptible and you got on that hero thing. Like, it happens, mm-hmm. you know. And Billy is over here, like, just on a whole other thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so Logan's like, all right, you know what? I'm going to help you out. And he carries Dolores away, which is like exactly what I'd said because you last episode were like, well, what could he even do? Because they're not allowed to hurt each other or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, all he has to do is like threaten to kill Dolores, the end. Which isn't actually really the thing. Mm. Like the physical harm is – would be enough to get him to comply. Right. But that's not what Logan's after. He wants him to understand. Yeah. Yeah. He wants him to snap out of this fucking fantasy um, and recognize that they are just on vacation. Mm -hmm. That she's not special. That this is just what she does. Um, And he's trying to prove a point. And he guts her like a fucking fish. Yeah, he does. And she's and, got her pistons and gears working yeah. her way. And I, it looks like she looks down at herself. Yes. I couldn't quite tell, but it does seem like she has a moment of yeah. being like, what the fuck is that? I do too. I, I agree. I agree. It does feel very much like she looks down and she, you know, like the thing, it's hard to say because they're supposed to, the the hosts are supposed to not respond to stimuli that doesn't make sense, right? So mm-hmm. we do, so it's possible that she just looks down and just thinks that she's just bleeding from her stomach. But I agree, even though it doesn't make sense for the story, it really does feel like she looks down and sees that she's like part machine. Mm-hmm. And Jesus Christ, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the way that whole scene is done is really upsetting. Like everything from William being so helpless her being so vulnerable and exposed Mm -hmm. and there's something also about the way that logan does it through her shirt Mm -hmm. that feels like he really isn't treating her like a person you know like for some reason that detail makes it seem all the more dehumanizing like that's just not a factor for him Mm -hmm. um yeah (laughs) And so, it definitely has an effect on our man, uh, our man Billy. Yeah. It, uh, but it, the, so the scene sort of, uh, that scene ends with him just kind of threatening Dolores. And then it goes to Bernard and Ford having their talk down in like the cold storage area. Mm-hmm. Um, and it looks like Bernard doesn't have any leverage. And then he brings Clementine out and gives her a gun. This, like, when you watch this, did you buy this? Um, I think I did. I think I did. I don't know what it is. I think it might be Ford's reaction. Where he really doesn't seem concerned. And Mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like he's putting on, like, oh, well, you know. Like, it really seems like he's just like... Interesting. Right. But not worried. Yeah. I think I bought it because he, he, and it's probably why I shouldn't have, because he gives in so easily. Like, he just, Mm. he does it. He gives um, Bernard the memories that he's asking for. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And Bernard here wants to meet Arnold. That's what he wants. He wants to get to the source and figure out why he's here, what did Arnold intend for him. Mm-hmm. You know, why, you know all the big existential questions. 
and it's fucked up because Ford is, you know, escorting him down through this journey, knowing full well. There's nothing there for him to find. You know, he yeah. could have just told him that in the beginning. He wouldn't believe him. But, I wouldn't um, believe him if I were him. I'd have to see it for myself. Yeah. But and the memories could all be implanted is the thing. And that's, you know, it's, and he's, he's wanting to know, like he asked about having the kid, you know, is this real? Mm-hmm. And um, Ford starts to talk about how it's his cornerstone and that all the hosts have to have it. That's what their story is built around, which is something else he had told us like really early on in the series. Mm-hmm. Um. And what they end up doing with Bernard is making his cornerstone the thing that keeps him from going all the way back through his memories. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it it answers all those kind of questions. Like, what am I? Who am I? I'm the man whose son died. You know, that's what I am. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to dig any deeper than that. Um, also, Clementine just standing there in this weird smock. <laughs> Which I don't yeah. know why she's wearing it because normally they have them just with no clothes on. So I got to feel like Bernard gave her something because he thought it would be rude to have her just stand there with yes. no clothes on. <laughs> exactly. I agree. Um, yeah, I think that that was it was a combination of things. It was, it's Ford's reaction. I think you're right about how quickly he capitulated. And also the fact that Bernard has to rely on Ford to let him go back. Mm hmm. And that, to me, felt like a giant problem. Yeah. Like, you can't believe anything you're seeing or, remem- right. quote, right. remembering. Because this guy has co- control over all of it. We watched him, with the flick of a finger, install the memory of Wyatt, mm-hmm. a complete backstory, mm-hmm. into Teddy's head. Yep. There's no reason for yep. me to believe anything. And that, not just and Teddy's this head. This is what I mean. Not just I Teddy's say- head. Remember, everybody in the park suddenly becomes aware of, of Wyatt. Right. And this is what I mean when I say, like, this this show, <clears throat> right now, it doesn't feel like it's really grounded in anything that I can hold on to easily. Right. Everything that everybody's experiencing and seeing might not be real. Right. Okay. And so it's hard for me to, like, know where to start talking about stuff. So while we're in Bernard's dreams, a couple of, or his memories, a couple of things happen. Um he can control what his memory is. What I mean is there's a moment where he's talking to Teresa. Right. And he just stops it. Mm-hmm. Um, like, he, we know that he's just accessing a memory, but he's living it as though it's, like, real. Um, there's a moment where he's talking to his wife. Mm-hmm. And she glitches. Yeah. And it's Ford. Yeah. And then he gets the memory about Elsie. Yeah, this is the kind of thing that I'm just really like. <clears throat> so the the Elsie thing, I figured he had been the one to kill her. I'm still not clear why Ford felt the need to lie to him. Mm-hmm. Because it doesn't, you can control everything this guy does. If you told him the truth, you wipe it two minutes later. Right. There's absolutely no reason other than just the fun of it mm-hmm. that you would lie to him. And the fun of it, I would think, would really be in telling him. Well, Ford says but, at the end that he was hoping that after Bernard learned everything, that he would choose. He would make a choice to continue to work with Ford. Right. So he wants Bernard to exhibit some uh will that he also simultaneously seems like he doesn't believe that the host could even have right like he wants bernard to choose him um and so you think that he didn't tell him the truth about that because he was no he tells him that's why he told him everything right but like why initially didn't did he lie to him um, oh, you mean all this time? About Elsie. Um, well, he says they've had to do a lot of uncomfortable things. And he also needs Bernard to, to work to do his narrative thing. 
But he er erases his memory of everything anyway. He could tell him the truth and then erase it. Why does he lie oh. when he's going to erase it? This is this is what I'm talking about. I don't know. Um, that doesn't make any sense. I to don't me. know. I'm trying to think if there's any good reason why he would do that. Because the there's like this moment in his memories of him remembering doing that, and it's like this big reveal, and I'm like, I assumed this felt fell a little flat mm -hmm. to me. Honestly, I think what's going on with Bernard and Ford for me was the weakest part of this episode. Really? Yeah, because I just didn't buy that Clem was under Bernard's control at all. I figured that he had killed Elsie, because that just makes sense. And... The reveal about him being Arnold, but like being constructed, is much less interesting than Arnold, like, having done something to prolong his own life or, you know, preserve some of his, like, goals and desires somewhere, which right. I'm not saying isn't still possible, but then for being able to walk away and have him just shoot himself in the head just it really f like just completely robbed the moment of the weight that it had and rendered all of it sort of moot um what did you think of finding out that Dolores is the one who killed Arnold um didn't I feel like I said something like that, that he probably got killed by his own things. But that wasn't like, it's, I don't, I don't have an opinion no. on it because okay. it, she can be controlled. So like either she did it because she became sentient and decided to do it. She did it because Arnold's like wanted to kill himself in a certain place and figured out how to get her to do it. Or Ford had mm. her do it. Okay. Or like, there, it's just, this is, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> everything that I want to talk about is so circular because everything is possible. Right. And to a certain degree, I feel like that's the, like the show's weakness. I, I need something grounding and there's very little right. in that respect. And like, even the, the, well, we can see that Bernard can control his memories. Do we? Do we see that? I don't see that. I see him in a memory and things are stopping and glitching and he's moving around within it. But I have no evidence to support that he's in control of this. No more evidence than I did about Clementine. Well, let me rephrase that because it's not so much that I think that he can control. Well, let me say <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to not fucking say what I want to say, but needs to be said. <laughs> Um, I guess my main point is just that as he's experiencing the memory, it is like he's, he's, he's actually reliving it, which is something we talked about before. Um, and for a moment, it doesn't, it's hard for him. It seems like it's difficult. It just seems like he's reliving it. And then he has a moment where he starts to take control like he does the thing with his son where he mm -hmm. tells the doctors to leave the room he tells the son to come back from the dead mm -hmm. um freezes Teresa and so it seems like he has um a realization that even though it feels like he's in this moment he's not and he can choose to remember whatever he wants to remember like it almost like what you're saying it it's just because it looks this way doesn't mean it's real. Right. Which actually does not help your argument because it does make <laughs> this it is what I'm, like... This is exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> so are, what things do you feel like are grounded? Or are there any? Which ones do you feel like you can kind of hang on to? The, the one thing at this point that I feel like I can hang on to is... Ford is in charge in a time that I think is way ahead of wherever Billy and Logan are. And st 
Stubbs is in trouble. I forgot all about that part of this episode. You are absolutely right. Things do not look good for him, do they? Mm-mm. Poor thing. Whenever he tries to do freeze motor functions, that shit never works for him. This is what I said like la- the end of last episode. I was just like, I am concerned about him because he has noticed something. And and see, and this is what – this is, it's just like kind of – I'm starting to get frustrated because – Don't worry. We only have one episode to go. <laughs> you know? But like – so – what and and again, I may be wrong about the the chain of events that leads to this, but what it looks like is that Stubbs noticed something weird going on with Bernard. His suspicions were aroused. He maybe looked into that a little too much. Maybe Ford noticed the interaction between the two of them and is setting Stubbs up to be taken out. Mm-hmm. However. If it is, in fact, that Ford saw the interaction between him and Bernard and there's a camera that caught that, but there's no camera where Bernard and Maeve were, I'm calling bullshit. Right. I think that would be fair. So that's what and that's what I'm assuming the cause and effect were. But. He might be being set up by somebody right. else. It might be a totally so, different thing. So I don't know. Here's the thing, too, about Elsie, is that there's no body. Yeah, and that was the other thing that I was going to say. It was like, the only other possibility is that Bernard didn't actually kill her. That it, he just, like, knocked her out, because that's a sleeper hold, right? Mm-hmm. And that these ghost nation dudes are bringing stubs somewhere because from her, like on her behest or Bernard's behest. Somebody's behest Somebody, is what I'm saying. That's a word that I hardly ever get to use. <laughs> <laughs> um, which would be, that would be nice if Elsie wasn't dead. I would like it. I'm not going to be too optimistic about <laughs> it, but it would be pretty cool if it turned out that like, Bernard managed to override his orders, but I don't, I just don't see how that's right. possible unless that was unless, part of the machination. Yeah. I was going to say, unless those were the orders. Mm-hmm. I mean, he didn't have any trouble having Bernard put Teresa's body somewhere so it could all be yeah. wrapped up. I mean, theoretically, Elsie was out there. She's the one that found the device in the first place. Mm-hmm. You know, why not just have her body be found somewhere? Alrighty. <laughs> um, um, so I think we go from Ford and Bernard to Maeve rolling oh, up right. or Hector, or did I skip something? No, I think that's right. Um, um, we haven't exactly been linear about this episode. That's true. So, um, so she rolls up on them and. Tells him what's about to happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she's right. And she wants to recruit him as well. She gives him basically the same speech she gave Bernard. Mm-hmm. But uh, she peppered it with a little love. <laughs> <laughs> and it was much more successful. Yeah, she unlocks the safe and is like, so you get to uh, see just what the gods have in store for you. Yeah. And a whole it's lot empty. of nothing. <laughs> and he really looks like shook. Yeah, yeah. Because this is his whole thing. Mm-hmm. This is his whole drive is to get this safe and everything that he, whatever it is that he thinks is going to bring him happiness or fulfillment is in this safe. Yep. And to open it and it be fucking empty. Like, show, just tell me about my whole entire life. Why don't you? I'm like a dog chasing cars. <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do with one if I caught one. What is that from? Uh, Dark Knight. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was that was Keith Ledger. Mm-hmm. I'm kidding. I know it's Heath Ledger. Oh, my God. Like, Chill out. I almost said something. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody relax. Close your email app on your phone. 
Um, that's just that's a running joke on Complete Guide to Everything is they call Heath Ledger Keith Ledger and they call Justin Bieber Justin Beaver <laughs> and a couple other celebrities that they like purposely mispronounce their names just enough to drive <laughs> you nuts and they do it they've done it for years now <laughs> consistently um, but yeah so he's finally like hey this seems real familiar you sitting on this safe mm-hmm. and she's like yeah does this seem familiar and then they start making out mm, she's got the she- knife right to her belly again yep. and she's telling him that she's been to hell yep. and she wants to take him with her um which is a hell of a pitch. Right? Uh, We're going to rob hell, which is a pretty awesome premise. Yeah. And then she decides, I know what let's do. Let's burn ourselves to death, which I can't think of a way that I would choose less if I were going to be in control of my own (laughs) death. Absolutely nothing could persuade me to choose burning (laughs) to death. It does look good, though. What? <laughs> no, it does no, not. No, that scene though. Come on, they're fucking with all the flames everywhere. All I could think was, you guys are about to have smoke <laughs> inhalation. That is not what I was thinking. She's <sighs> about to have some other kind of inhalation. <laughs> I don't get it. Is she inhaling his sperm? <laughs> his junk. <laughs> Wait. You're just confusing me further. I don't like this premise, and I reject it. <laughs> She's inhaling right. his junk. That got away no. from me a little bit. It was no. supposed to be a blowjob joke. <laughs> <laughs> it went wildly out of control. Oh, God, help us. Uh. <sighs> all right, all right. So they're burning. Um, back to Billy and Logan. You were right. I can't believe I got so caught up. And. He acts like he's seen the light. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Bygones be bygones. We're going to be the best brother-in-laws. It's going to be a hoot. And I thought he was full of shit, but I expected for him to make a move immediately. Mm, No, he makes a whole different move. Yeah, he does a different thing. that That was a, now this I was completely shocked by. Yeah, the way that, cause like him, him being full of shit figured. The way he handles it. Also, not just that, but the fact that Logan's making sense here. Mm -hmm. I get it. And what happens here stays here. We're going to be brothers, man. Yep. I'm I'm really happy about it. Like, for a second, I'm like, oh, Logan, Mm -hmm. you're almost human right now. Yeah. So all of this, I was like, hmm, interesting. Okay. And and before... He, he, um, because after, uh, fuck, what's it? After Logan guts Dolores, she grabs a knife and, like, slices his face, mm-hmm. shoots a couple people and makes a run for it. Right. And Billy's like, run, I'll, I'll catch up to you. I'll find you, yeah. Right, so I was thinking, yeah, that's, that's what's totally gonna happen. Yeah. But then, no. <laughs> yeah, so... Well, all right. First, we move again to Teddy and the man in black before that whole waking up scene. So we'll go there in a minute. But here's this girl. The arrow is in Teddy's shoulder. Uh, It's sort of weird because, like, when she had put the arrow in his shoulder, all of these dudes were around. Mm -hmm. But now they're not. And I can't help but wonder, like, why the? I thought they were still there. Let's see. There's isn't there there's like a guy one a finger or some shit? Yeah, there's one guy that's chopping. Uh, I guess, but the there had been like ten, I think. Yeah, they were all of those weird cloak things, and you know they just kind of rose out of the woods. Maybe they just yeah. settled back into the bushes. <laughs> yeah, maybe they're just sleeping. <laughs> but it did feel kind of like. She just wanted the dramatic effect and <laughs> was just like, yeah, y'all can go home now. I'm done with scaring <laughs> the shit out of him. Um, maybe it's supposed to be that they, like, ate each other? Let's hope not. I hadn't thought of that. Funny, actually. <laughs> um, oh, God. Because there, so there are some bodies on the ground that don't feel like they 
either they carried in people that they'd killed or they killed each other or something. Mm. I don't know. Um, but anyway, yeah, she's talking about Wyatt and Teddy's like, yeah, he came back with some crazy ideas and it was like the devil had hold of me. And I remember sh- mutinying and shooting them all. And then he shot the general or whatever. Mm-hmm. And she's like, interesting. Is that true? And then all of a sudden, we get a different version of right. everything. And it doesn't take much prodding. Um, but yeah, he remembers being the one. And he's not killing soldiers. He's just killing townsfolk Mm -hmm. walking through and he's apparently the sheriff. Yep. He's got like a sheriff badge on. So yeah, he's been entrusted to like protect and care for these people and he has massacred all of them. Mm -hmm. He kills her too because she's there. Right. And... It's just really like, is he, I I really thought for quite a bit here that he was Wyatt until she's like, well, Wyatt, well, you'll be by his side again when you're ready. Mm-hmm. And so then I'm like, okay, maybe he's not Wyatt or maybe that's just a figure of speech. Right. Well, and he is Wyatt, but she just means like, oh, you're. Wyatt hasn't quite come to the surface yet, so I'm going to kill you so that your next incarnation, Wyatt, will be closer to the surface and will come out of you again. Right. I guess? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's hard. We don't know. All right. So so the way the show, so far what we know is that there is this town and someone has come through. And killed everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've seen it look like soldiers. We've seen it first with just Wyatt killing everybody. Then we had Teddy have his flashback. Remember when him and the man in black rolled up on that, that little um, soldier encampment? And the guy mm-hmm. recognizes him. Right. So then we see it that time. And it's now Teddy is also killing people along with Wyatt. And now this time it's just Teddy killing people and not even soldiers anymore. Right. Um, So it's like a thing that is, it's as if, well, here's the tricky part too, is that, and this is one of, this is what I loved about the show because it is so circular, but I can see how it could also be really frustrating is that as far as we know, the audience, this, none of this happened. Right. Right. This is just a story that Ford pushed out fairly recently. Right. But we also know that Ford likes to base his narratives and his host on real things. Mm-hmm. Right. So that, that there will be like a kernel of truth buried inside the narrative. Right. Um,. We've also seen this town a couple of different times with these bodies laying all all around. And Dolores has seen this town right. with bodies all laying around. But it's hard for us to say. Billy's seen it. Billy's seen it? On the beach. Well, that was the Confederates, but I guess I'm getting my tons of bodies mixed up. <laughs> That'll happen. <laughs> what can you do? My tons so many of- massacres, am I right? <laughs> it's like reading American history. Um, so she um kills Teddy. Um, cr- cracks the shit out of the man in black's head against this fucking stone. Yeah, which I appreciated. Same. Um. And I, and it's also you had said a while ago how you know just because they can't kill you doesn't mean they can't hurt you. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and then they had a really elaborate way of killing him, which I thought was a really nice roundabout. 
you know. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, I mean, you can get out of this, can't you? You know, and we didn't, we didn't kill you. We just tied a rope around your neck, you know. So technically. <laughs> and I kind of like the reminder because it's like this really tense, like, oh, is he going to be able to do it in time? But then Charlotte shows up and reminds you that, like, oh, he really wasn't in danger, yeah. really. Yeah. Like, they're keeping track of everything he does. Mm-hmm. If there's a problem, they'll be able to get him out of it. It's yeah. fine. Eventually, I'm sure he'll be in a place where that's not the case. But for now, he's just like, yeah, sure, asked for it. I don't care. I got to go. And that's like their entire conversation. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. What? Nothing. <laughs> Um, so she and yeah, she says something about Teresa and how like not everything is part of this huge game. And he's like, if you don't think that, then you are just dumb. Yeah. It's almost like the line Teresa gave Sizemore at the beginning mm-hmm. where it's like you're smart enough to see something, but not smart enough to see everything. <laughs> um, yeah. And he, she wants him to back her to put Ford out and like the board politics. And he's like, fuck Ford. I'm not interested in his story anymore. That's old news. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you do what you want. Just don't fucking come bother me again. Yeah. And she, and she, I like that she says specifically, people are just looking for a warm body to shoot or fuck. Everything doesn't have to be quite so broke. Yeah. <laughs> Which I love that use of that word. <laughs> and it feels very accurate at this point. So, um, I'm trying to think. What happens at, who do we go to after her and, and um, the man in black? We go to Stubbs, which we pretty much okay. talked about already. All right. So my um, check is behind here. Up so, the and campfire. then after that is Logan waking up. Oh, um, another an- and, another bunch of bodies. <laughs> and like part of why I thought that he might be Wyatt is because these people have been really butchered mm-hmm. in a way that feels a little excessive. Yeah, a little bit. Just good God. Mm-hmm. The number of people who have retained all of their limbs is in the minority. For sure. <laughs> he is uh, looks like he has opened up all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what the fuck he was looking for. Um, oh, and we should just, um, while they're at the campfire with Teddy, um, the host does tell the man in black one more time that the ho- that the maze is not for him. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, and he hears her say to Teddy about the, um, house swallowed by sand and that's how he knows where to go next. Right, right. Um, so, yeah. So, he, William has just killed everyone. Yeah. Um, because he sees clearly now. And he puts... The rain uh, <laughs> Sorry. And he puts that knife to Logan's throat, and I fucking believe that shit 100%. Yeah, I don't know about same. you. Same. <laughs> I'm really, like, wondering what would have happened. Because it doesn't feel like there was anybody on hand ready to jump in. Right. He, you know, like, if he mm-hmm. did decide, you know what, I'm ending this here. That would have been mm-hmm. the end of it You know, in a split second. When we, and nobody would have been able to stop well, it. Well, that's a good point. Because when you talk about <clears throat> the possibility of things taking place at different times, if that's happening the time with billy and logan would be in the past where maybe the park wasn't you know as um fancy and technologically advanced um like remember how when they shoot at the man in black like it doesn't do anything really right but we see william and logan get shot and it hurts yeah so like there's it seems like there's been some changes, discrepancies, you know, there. like some yeah. some improvements over the years, more safety precautions, and you know things like that. Just, just as the natural order of like advancement. Yeah. 
Hmm. I feel like that really lowers the stakes, though. <laughs> For I don't want to get. I don't want to even feel pain. It would still motivate me to change the way that I'm behaving if I'm not. If I'm trying to avoid the feeling of maybe being shot. Mm-hmm. And if you assess that somebody is like, you know, their health is up to it, that they can take it, they should be allowed to have that kind of uh, consequence. Well, remember, that's the, well, that's the whole thing with the man in black, though. He's so disgusted at the beginning of the series when he shows up outside of Dolores' house and they all pull guns on him. Right. And he just is so over it. It's boring. It's nothing to him. And yeah. he, you know, is not impressed. There are no stakes. Um so, so, so what you just said, that's exactly what seems like it happens. But I imagine that would only happen if you, how often would you have to go here to get bored of it? Like, he seems like he right. comes all the time. <laughs> yeah, he practically lives here, I would think. Um, all right, so we have the the kind of cut together section of Dolores... Coming, ac- coming to the town that she recognized from far away that's, like, abandoned. And Bernard's memories. And so we're interspersing oh, wait. the conversation that he has. What? Wait, hold up. I just want to get to that scene. And then I got confused when you said Bernard's memories. It's a uh, minute 43 and 30 seconds that I'm at. Um... Okay. And she, so she's walking around in this abandoned town and sees the church. And I, because this is where she was with William earlier. Right. But when we came to, none of it wasn't there anymore. It was buried. That's correct. But she's walking up towards it as if it's still there. And when she steps through the doors of the church, she's wearing her old clothes, her dress. Mm -hmm. So then there's all these people sitting here talking to themselves. Well, also the town has been, I think the town has been excavated. But wasn't she there with, with buried in sand? So it's been, so. I'm trying to remember. I know when you, when she, her and Billy walk by, it's just the church steeple sticking steeple. out, right? Right. Right. Okay. Um, so I'm feeling like her walking into it isn't really happening here. Well. Because she's also in her old clothes. Well. <laughs> and what's-her-face is sitting there. Um, well, there's mo- multiple what's-her-faces. There's... Uh, Armistice mm-hmm. and uh, <clears throat> Wyatt's girl. Right. So, all right. Well, the show showed us um, a couple episodes ago what the town looked like at the beginning when, when Ford is telling us, you know, and, mm-hmm. and he talks about it a little bit in this episode, but there's a, a much longer sort of monologue where he talks about when they first opened the park and no one lived there, and we see everybody dancing. Mm-hmm. So, when everyone is dancing, if we take what he says, that's the beginning. That's before the park opened. So this little town is a place that's filled with hosts before the before the park opens. Right. So that's what I mean, is that I don't feel like this is actually happening now. Okay. That when she's walking in there and there are people sitting around and chattering to themselves or chattering to Arnold or whatever the fuck. It, I thought that this was her memory of having been here before. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. Um... And she steps into the confessional booth, which actually proves to be a elevator. And uh, when she gets downstairs, she's back in the clothes that she had been in when she was with Billy. And 
there is a complete disaster. It is a mess. Here. Um, there are bodies and they're not like decomposed. This happened somewhat recently. I don't know what to make of this. The lights are flickering bodies everywhere. It's almost like there's, and, and there's like, um, some, what do you call it? Some gurneys? Like somebody was doing some kind of, oh, uh, right, right, right. Stuff. Yeah. I forgot about that. Um, so I don't, maybe this was like going to be a secret section of the park that like, but it all, everything looks fresh enough that it, it had to have been somewhat recent. Um, and who it is, is just really up in the air. Mm-hmm. It, it could have been Bernard. It could be Ford. It could be neither one of them. I suspect it is, but... And then we kind of come back into what I think is a memory because she's wearing the dress again and she sees some nurse type walk by. There's a bunch of dudes playing cards that are being programmed and Ford comes out all young and shit <laughs> and walks past Doing her. Doing that really weird fast walk. <laughs> right? His, uh, I have business to attend to, <laughs> sir, walk. And he will walks past her without seeing her and goes and is like, Arnold, we need to talk. So I have no idea what could have happened down here. Like, and why these bodies are so fresh yeah. because yeah, they're robots, but they're made out of flesh and blood. So they should be decaying. If it's been any significant amount of time over a week, they shouldn't look like this. So, all I can think is like either either there was a secret project that one of these two dudes was working on or this was her and she's been down here before. Mm. I don't know what that looks like either um, because she'd have had to be down there pretty recently. And is this supposed to be the start of the maze? Oh, is the maze the actual facility? With all the people, the actual human beings in it. Because if that's the maze, that's hilarious. <laughs> I will, I would love that, honestly. <laughs> like, just, yeah, no, the, the big, the big maze that this fucking dude who's actually human is obsessed with. Is just getting to get go into the logistical laboratory. <laughs> How fucking disappointed is he going to be? <laughs> what a bummer. And she continues down further into the area that we are familiar with that we've seen before where she's meeting with Bern- where she had been meeting with Bernard. And this whole thing is really like this was the part because he looks like himself And is wearing the same thing no matter when it is, apparently. It's hard to know when all the conversations that were happening with, like, her coming awake, when that was from. Right. And he is meeting with her in her mind, too, apparently. Because he tells her, I can't help you. And she... And he says, do you remember why? And she says, because you're dead. Because I killed you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess he's remember. not wearing the exact same thing. He's got a little bit more of a sleeker outfit on. Mm-hmm. There are some, some, some small, subtle differences. There's one difference that has been in every scene, which is how I, it was so stupid when I noticed it. I couldn't stop thinking about it and I got like low key obsessed with it. <laughs> okay. And that got me thinking about <clears throat> the Bernard and possible Arnold connection. Oh, um, okay. And it just was, and, and when I realized that I was like really like tickled, but also really annoyed. <laughs> Why were you annoyed? Just be- because of what it is because- or because you figured it out so because soon? Because of, like a combination of both like it's the kind of thing that you are like oh well that's 
get out of here. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, and, and then also I had follow-up questions because what this difference is is something that has been shown to us and even talked about. And I was just like, I should have saw that immediately. <laughs> huh. Okay. I'm interested. Like, can you tell me or is that a spoiler? Well, I guess since you know that he is Arnold, it's not really a spoiler. But once you know, you'll be able to tell who is who whenever you see them on screen. So we uh, only have so one you don't episode wanna, okay. left. So. Gotcha. Um, yeah, because I'm noticing, like, I thought that their suits were the same. But the suit that he's wearing in this scene where he's, like, telling her that he's dead, it doesn't have any buttons. It's almost got a Mandarin collar, Mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. It's just a little bit more, like, uh, modern looking than everything he's been wearing before. It it looks almost almost like a smock or something. Mm -hmm. Like, I almost want to say the word clinical. Yeah, I could see that. It reminds me of what um, Malfoy supposedly wore to the Yule Ball. Because it was like a black oh, Vickers yeah. collar type yeah, suit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're right. Um, so she sits down and has this memory and then comes back to herself and realizes that the room is filled with cobwebs and hasn't been used in a long time and goes back upstairs and the church is empty. Mm-hmm. And then she says, William, because there's somebody at the door and who should come through but the man in black, Mm -hmm. which was part of what made my brain jostle. (laughs) And she looks horrified. Like when she sees him, she remembers this man for sure. And she backs away from him like she's going to throw up. So, but she, but. He's there, and she seems to be wearing the same outfit that she was wearing when she was with William. But, 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 but her shirt. Oh, it's not cut. There's no blood. Right, 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 right. <laughs> There's too much to keep track of. <laughs> what time is it? That's not usually such a huge question. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, um... This, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm looking at this, looking at, because I'm kind of like out of sync with... with, with uh, playback and I'm watching the scene where Bernard first wakes up mm-hmm. and it just like caught my breath a little bit because it's just like it's so man and then I'm huh? I'm like really hoping that Bernard's set this whole thing up so that he shoots himself because he figures that that's what Ford's going to make him do and everything's in place already that's what I'm hoping for you know, um, I don't know anything yet about season two. Um, mm-hmm. I watched one trailer and then that was it. I haven't really read anything. I didn't watch the rest of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I probably will do that soon um, because I don't know what's coming. Like, I don't know who's, you know, anything really. Mm-hmm. I'm so tickled. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> so, all right. So, it ends with him, her saying, I killed you, right? Yeah. And then we go back to Bernard and him making the choice to tell Clementine to pull the trigger, which does not happen. Mm. And then him being like, but you could have stopped me at any time. Why would you? And he said, well, I was just hoping that. Mm. If if you had all of the information, you would have chosen to be my partner again. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is the moment where Bernard just is like, 
basically tells him, well, fine, go ahead, wipe me, erase my sentience, my mnemonic evolution. And he says, oh, no, such clinical language. Stop. I would prefer the more narrative voice, which I I I wanted to rip him to shreds. <laughs> what an infuriating <laughs> moment. Yeah. Holy Mary, mother yeah. of God. Um, Bernard walked over to Clementine and you see him doing it mm-hmm. and looking so horrified that this still works. Yeah. yeah. Because apparently there's a back door in all their code that he put there, mm-hmm. but that Ford has figured out how to exploit. Yeah. I mean, when, when he's building Bernard and he, Bernard's like, well, who am I? He calls him the perfect instrument the perfect partner Mm -hmm. um like he's going to be able to do most of the stuff that that arnold could do but without any of the pushback that he got from arnold exactly and in this last scene where he's disposing of him it really is like just getting rid of some tools like he's Mm -hmm. a little sad about it but he's just sad for himself you know. This is like some Stepford Wives type shit where I want a wife to like do everything and carry a bunch of the labor, but not actually be a person. Mm-hmm. And um, like, yeah, for it just seems bummed out that, that Bernard didn't want to just keep being his pet. Like he's mm-hmm. not sad for Bernard at all. <laughs> he's, no. He's, like It's almost like, oh, do I even have time to build a whole new one, though? My busy right. schedule. <laughs> And that's what I'm wondering if, if like, he's got another one that's just in backup Well, somewhere. they've got that, they've shown us that weird one that's being built a couple of times. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, we just see it in the right. background. I remember we talked about maybe him making another Teresa before we realized that he was just going to have her body be found. <laughs> or um, um, Elsie, or an Elsie. Thought, maybe, too. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I uh, if he has another one, because otherwise... Bernard just killed himself in this kind of public area that this has got to start looking bad for him, right? How many people can vanish and die in mysterious circumstances before everybody starts to be like, oh. Yeah, I mean, people are... And all the board seems to be concerned with, though, is getting this information out that they can use for whatever other plans they have. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and all this is happening. And meanwhile, to yeah, and that's the thing too, because I was called a Teresa. Um, Charlotte is also really only concerned about what's going on with the board, yeah. you know. But meanwhile, Ford's got fake people in high management positions, and he's having them kill themselves. And this is all kind of happening on her watch. <sighs> this is too much. It's a lot. My brain is broken. It is a lot. <laughs> I need a week to process all of this. <laughs> I'm not going to I'm not going to make you do any predictions and if you have some be, feel free to yell them out now. But All I've got is what I've said, <laughs> which isn't much and doesn't make much sense and isn't really even a prediction. It's just a vague theory. <laughs> so I don't even think it really counts. That's where I'm at right now. <laughs> Hmm. Well, only one more episode and then none of your questions will be answered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honestly kind of expecting that. There is a big part of me that I'm just like, yeah, this is probably not going to get wrapped up. I'm, be- I'm betting. The finale is really good. Okay. Is it the regular length or is it longer than the others I have been? I don't know. We can find out real quick, though. Um, bum, 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 bum. I don't know where that just came I from, thought, guys. Sorry. I thought you were doing the... Uh, <laughs> well, I will be now that you just put it in my head, so thanks for that. <laughs> Thank you very much. What I what I like to call the factory theme song, thanks to Looney Tunes. It is the factory fucking theme song. God <laughs> damn it, you are so right. That's exactly what it is. That's what I call it in my head. Oh, my God. Oh my god, I can't believe that's exactly what the fuck that is. <laughs> and I always get confused because I always want to call it the, like, I want to associate it with the Muppets. And I don't even think oh. that's, like, correct. 
but it is definitely fucking factory music. Yeah, definitely. It is an hour and 38 minutes, the finale. Oh, shit. Okay. All right. Noted. Um, all right. Well, I better allow myself some extra time that day. Yeah, no and shit. And tomorrow, you know, I want to watch it now, but Owen's home, so I'm going to have to wait. I'm dying, though. Mm-hmm. I can't um, wait for you to watch it. I can't wait for you to watch it. <laughs> and there was- Y'all know that Rashawn's excited when she starts to sing things because she does not do that. And there's like a lot of little stuff that we didn't really go over. Like, like not, th- but it's not that I don't think it's important. Um, but, you know, we're getting so close and I really wanted to hear your brain go a little crazy. Okay. So, guys, fair. if you're listening and you're like, oh, but you didn't talk about the thing, it's okay. <laughs> I know what you mean, though, too. Like, that there's definitely, if you point a little thing out, sometimes that can start a chain reaction where somebody figures everything out. Like, that was the thing I was worried about in Harry Potter a bunch of times, mm. was that there was something that you missed, but I was really worried that if I went out of my way to be like, here's the thing everything else would start to click right, completely right. and I'd be like, God damn it. <laughs> so I had to hold back a lot and you still figured out a lot. Well, you know. <laughs> oh. Um, all right. Have I been reading patron names on this show? I have, right? Yeah. I don't do it on every show. Let me do it real quick. Um, we missed a couple weeks, so Bear with me, everybody. My apologies on that. I love you, and I'm sorry. But my mommy was visiting. Mumsy. Um, So, this past two weeks, we've got... Kay Wakeman, Michael Sardina, Kayla Harless, Jordan Rose, Sarah Marsteller, Lori Peterson, Mick Gorison... Brandon Ridenauer, Julie Volpenine, Rachel Jimenez, Sheila Perryman, Christy Godsey, Heather, Kate Miles, Kelsey Berthelot, Winona Moon, Haya Mutashar, and James Gilkerson. Welcome to all of you delightful people. There's a lot of you this uh, this cycle. Um, so those of you who are interested in becoming a patron, go to patreon.com slash unspoiled. I am just finishing up this, uh, coming week, the patrons only season, uh, series, Jessica Jones that I was covering with Maggie. I was doing, we did three episodes per podcast, except for the finale got its own episode. Um, to be honest, wasn't a massive fan this season, which is too bad, but it was really fun to record on. And that has been available to $5 and up patrons. And once the final episode is released and has been out for a couple days, it will be opened up to a dollar and up patrons. Um, I've recently started to check out other podcasts on Patreon to see what they offer. And I really have to say, as far as like content that you get as a patron for a dollar, I am head and shoulders above everything that I've seen. I offer a whole fucking lot for a dollar a month. Most podcasts, it's your dollar pledge. The reward like column says, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. And that's it. That's all. Really? And I, I don't blame them for that one bit. I, didn't I really even know that don't was an like option. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fine. Like I'm not holding that against anybody because a dollar, it's a tough thing if you don't do what I do as much as I do it to have anything to offer. Um, but for me, at a dollar, you get access to like 10 different patrons only shows and we're going to be doing the reread and there's like the patrons only Facebook group, which is super fun, and very active. There's just for a dollar, you get a fucking lot And, you know, so much that it has occurred to me that maybe I should change that, but I don't want to do that. I like having my community be, you know, substantial Mm -hmm. and I don't want to cut people out. Um, So, yeah, guys, if you're interested in supporting the show for a buck, it's not just supporting me. You get a ton in return, a ton. So check out patreon.com 
slash unspoiled. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash unspoiled pod, Twitter at unspoiled show, Instagram at unspoiled podcast. And, um, I think that's everything. Mm, okay. Anything you wanted to add? No, ma'am. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I really do, but forgive me everybody. Um, but yeah, this has been really, this has been quite a show. <laughs> When does the second season, April? It's this month, it's right? It's sometime this month, yeah. Good God, I'm going to really need to watch it on uh, social media. Yeah, you will. Like, yeah, because oh, I think it's going to be, I think the profile is a lot higher than it was for the first season, kind of like what happened with The Leftovers. Yeah. So you, it might be even more people posting about it and talking about it and writing about it. Yeah, Because there was a lot of buzz. They One of the trailers, I think, aired during the Super Bowl. So HBO oh. is like really. What's um? Do they does it air on Sundays? Yes, yeah, the way the Game of Thrones show. did. Okay. Oh my! Well, God. I guess I'll just have to start scheduling shit on Sunday to stay off my phone. The episode just you know auto played into the next one. Mm-hmm. I cannot wait for you to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't wait. All right, guys. I hate you. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already, please, please leave us a review on iTunes. Um, I had checked recently and we hadn't gotten another one, but I will check again next week. And if we do, it's going to be the last time that I can read it out loud for a couple of months. So probably longer. Um, so yeah, get your reviews in now and help us get noticed and tell your friends, Hey, are you watching the second season or do you want to prepare for the second season by reliving it all? Check out this awesome podcast mm-hmm. that I found with two great ladies. And until then, toodaloo motherfuckers. Bye guys. <laughs>